Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. Well, it is so rocking to be back with all of you. Well, I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to all of you who came out to yesterday's video. We had such a good time. We did messages from the spirit world. If you didn't see that video, check it out. It's in the queue right before this one. Well, today I wanted to come and talk to you about one of my favorite deities. You know, today is Wiccan Wednesday, and we always talk about something mystical and magical related to Wicca. And for those of you who follow Wicca, you know that in our tradition, we believe in a dual deity. We believe in a god and a goddess. And I've talked a lot about the goddess here, but a lot of you have written since think about we want to know more about the god aspect. Can you tell us about some of the gods of Wicca? So that's what we're going to do today. Today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite, favorite gods. I, I feel such a connection to him. And his name is Dionysus. I call him Lord Dionysus. Lord Dionysus is an ancient god. Well, he's actually older than time. He's an immortal. But uh, he entered the earth um, several thousand years ago as a son of the great god Zeus. Uh, Dionysus uh, is actually, many people classify him as a demigod, but most of us who have encountered him say, ain't no demi about it, he's full on God. Um, anyways, he's fascinating because he was born of an affair between Zeus and Semele. Semele was a, a human mortal who fell in love with Zeus. And um, anyways, when she found herself pregnant, um, she was scared because the rumor was that Hera was going to kill her for having an affair with Zeus. Now, you know, Zeus always seems to scrape out of these things, but uh, what happened was Zeus, using his power, took the fetus from um, Semele and he stitched the, the growing child into his leg, into his thigh, and he let the child grow within his body. Now, remember, Zeus is a divine being, so he can do these things. And when the child was fully grown, uh, Zeus removed him and uh, claimed him as his son. And at that time, um, he gave him the name of Dionysus. And Dionysus entered um, Mount Olympus and took his seat among the gods. Now, every god on Mount Olympus had some sort of mission or dealings with the earth that they were responsible for. And what uh, Lord Dionysus uh, came to find is that he loved to work with agriculture and helping humanity to advance. And so Lord Dionysus descended from Mount Olympus down to the earth and he went among humans and for several years he traveled the globe and he taught people the art of working with agriculture, particularly with grape production and wine production. And this is why he is now known as the god of wine, the god of drinking, the god of partying. Now, for most people, the association uh, of Dionysus with wine is as far as it goes. But actually, Dionysus' power and mysticism go far deeper than that. In fact, there was an entire cult in ancient Greece of Dionysus. And the Dionysian mysteries were focused on ritual transformation of consciousness, of ecstasy, of connecting to higher states of the self and ultimately to the spiritual realms. Um, many of Dionysus' followers would have these wild ecstatic gatherings. They would, you know, decorate the statue of the god. They would dance wildly and drink wine under the moonlight. And it was a very free-flowing cult. And now, compared to most Greek religion uh, and also Roman religion, which followed, um, most religions, uh, the Greco-Roman religions, were very staid and proper. You know, you would offer lights at the temple, and it was very, very subdued. Kind of like modern-day Catholic Church, you go in, light candles. It was similar in ancient Greece and Rome. So, for the followers of Dionysus to be so ecstatic, to dance, sing, revel, and shout, and play music, this was really shocking to most people. The followers of Lord Dionysus were called Bacchanals, and this is where we later get the name Bacchus as the god, the Roman version of Dionysus. Whether you call him Dionysus or Bacchus, we're talking about the same being, the god of wine. But more than that, he was god of religious ecstasy. In time, Dionysus came to be associated with the theater. And uh, theaters uh, in ancient Greece, you know, the Greek theater was very magical and mystical. 
And um, the, the theaters were considered to be the temples of Dionysus. So when you would go to see a play, in a sense, you were participating in a spiritual and religious practice. Now, as you may recall, yesterday I showed you my pendant of my, my uh, theater masks. And for those of you who are wondering, you know, today the theater still uses the symbol as a representation of the theater, performing arts. Anybody in media, you know, can claim the masks as their symbol. And since I do YouTube and have done television and performances and been in the theater, I wear the masks as a sign of my love of media work and performance. Even though what I do as a psychic is real, there still is a media and a performance element to it. So, who should I pray to? but Lord Dionysus, that's right. Now what's really fascinating about the ancient Greek theater is that, um, as many of you know, when the, the actors would go on stage, they would wear these masks, as I showed you on the pendant. Uh, there were actually Greek theater masks. The theater masks were considered actually as almost sacred items. Well, not almost, they were sacred items. It was believed that when a Greek actor would don a mask and go on stage, that he in some way became the character it literally was like kind of channeling. He would channel through the, the created character, the, the person it represented, and that person came to life. The theater masks were so sacred, they were not ever worn in jest or for just costume parties. When the theater performance was completed or even during a time of production, theater masks were put on altars to Lord Dionysus to ask his presence and his blessing on the production and to bless the actors. So this is how Lord Dionysus became the god of the theater because theater was considered almost a sense of transformation of consciousness. When an actor became the character through the mask, it was believed to be a ritual transformation and thus a sacred experience. So I thought today I'd show you my altar to Lord Dionysus and we talk a little more about that. So come on along. Hail, Lord Dionysus, hail, God of wine, hail, God of the vine, hail, God of ecstasy, hail, God of ritual, hail. Well, guys, here is my little altar to Lord Dionysus. And you may notice here I have a beautiful purple cloth. Purple was considered the color of Lord Dionysus. So if you want to work with him, you might want to get some purple cloth for your altar. Uh, his candle colors are purple, red, or green. And so you'll notice here I have a beautiful, I haven't lit it, I have to light this, beautiful purple candle. It looks kind of black on camera, but it's actually purple uh, to represent his, his color. Purple is also a sign of royalty. And as a son of Zeus, he is in many ways a prince. And so the purple represents his royal aspect as well as his connection to grape harvesting, the fruit of the vine and wine. Um, if you have an altar to Lord Dionysus, I highly encourage you to incorporate purple into it in some way. Now I also have a beautiful little red candle holder here to represent him also, red and purple. Uh, I suspect when they say red in some of the books, it could be wine red, but either way, red, purple, these are colors associated with royalty as well as with this God. Now, if you want to create an altar to Lord Dionysus, you might want to get a statue of him. And if you can't get a statue, buy a picture. Now, this is an amazing statue that I have. Let me just move this aside. And you can see it here. He's standing barefoot. He's wrapped in a uh, like a toga robe just around his waist. His chest is bare. Now, I just hung my necklace on him, my theater mask to ask for his, oops, I just dropped this here, to ask for the blessing. Let me take this off here. Um, so, but um, he's oftentimes shown either nude or very loosely clothed. Uh, a lot of his rituals, people would dance naked. It was very free flowing. And this statue is really lovely because as you can see, he looks beautiful and he's eating grapes and his hair, I don't know if it shows up here on camera, but his hair is made of grapes and the grapevine. So it represents him as a god of the earth. Um, many people believe that the green man, who I also honor and worship, is an aspect of Dionysus. That is, the god of the vine 
he also manifests as the green man. And at looking at this statue, it definitely has green man elements to it. And as you can see, the, the grapes going down his side here. Um, hopefully you can see that. See the vine on his back? Let me zoom in there. You can see the purple grapes going down through his hair, woven in with the vine. Very much a green man element with Lord Dionysus. Hail Lord Dionysus. Um, now, on his altar, some of the traditional offerings are, as I said, purple candles and light, but you also want to get a beautiful chalice. I have this beautiful kind of purple tinged glass chalice that I'm using for libation offerings. I'm actually going to buy some wine or grape juice. Actually, it's probably about grape juice because I don't drink that much wine, but grape juice is, is a fine offering to him because he's God of grapes. And I'm going to offer that in this. Um, I recently just got I got this actually at Michael's. Michael's is a great store for, for anything like nature oriented too. These are little grapes. They're actually made of rubber uh, with fake leaves. Um, and you can buy these grapes to, to set on his shrine to decorate as an offering. Now, I would encourage you, you know, also to daily offer real items to him, such as you can offer real grapes, but they don't last long. But for decor, uh, he appreciates grape imagery. And so you could offer grapes. So have a chalice, have some grapes, if you can get a statue or a picture. Um, now on my altar, because I'm working with him as God of theater and God of ritual, uh, by the way, you know, they say um, that um, theater and religion are so intertwined. And it's true in the early days, the earliest uh, rituals uh, were theater and theater was magic and magic was a religion. So it was all intertwined. And so since I want to honor him as the God of the theater, uh, because I love to do YouTube, I'm putting this little award out here that I have. Uh, one of my friends, when I got to a thousand subscribers, gave this to me. And I think it's just beautiful. It says Bob Hickman's Spirit Channel. And it's a little trophy with theater mess. So I love that. And so I'm honoring him as Lord of Theater through this, this thing. And I'm seeking his blessing here. So there you go. There's another element. So now I've uh, got my altar all alight here. I've lit in the lit the purple candle. I found a white candle I think looks wonderful here. I've got that and I have this little red one set, a little votive before the sacred theater mass. As I said earlier, the masks in theater were considered so sacred they were put on altars to Lord Dionysus to seek prayers for his blessing. So, you know, because I do channeling, which they believe that the actors channeled spirits you know, this is also a great symbol for any of you doing channeling, like another person comes in and, and you know, it's like my experience when I channel this, a spirit overshadows me. So it's very much like a new form comes upon me. And then I also put down here my theater mask charm right here on the altar. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, you should probably have some incense. Lord Dionysus worships very sensual. So you can make it luxurious, like beautiful, fine claws overflowing wine, you know, lots of candles. Make your worship of him very sensual. He's a very sensual God. And and I like that because I think sometimes in our religion, we get too etheric in our mind. Everything goes intellectual. And Dionysus is about spontaneous experience. So I also have some water here in our antique silver uh, pitcher. This is my pitcher that has pan on it. It's hard to see here, but Lord Pan is woven into this. Maybe you can see him there. Um, see his face and his horns. That's Lord Pan. Pan is oftentimes associated with Dionysus. It's believed that they celebrate life together and they're both gods of the field and the vine. So I'm going to put some water in my chalice here. And then I'm going to make an offering, a ritual offering. And so I might take my chalice and lift it up and say, Lord Dionysus, we invoke you, God of the vine, God of ecstasy, God of the arts. We invoke you now. May you receive our humble offering of water. May it be a blessing and may your power flow through it to nourish our body, minds, and spirit. May you receive this water 
in joy and gratitude for your blessings you send us. Hail, Lord Dionysus. There you go. And you can likewise offer the light to him. So say, Lord Dionysus, receive this flame. May its power burn as your power burns. And may you manifest your power through this light. So mote it be. You can offer your incense. Lord Dionysus, receive this incense. May as it rise, may our prayers rise to you. And may the power of your blessing flow throughout the land. Lord of the vine, Lord of ecstasy, Lord of altered consciousness, Lord of the arts, grant us your blessing now. So mote it be. So mote it be. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this little altar day. This is just one way to set up an altar. And I think this is kind of preliminary. In time, I'm going to add more to it. Like, I think I'd like to add some more greenery, more vines. You could add potted plants. Uh, you know, I buy those silk vines. I, I'd like to get those over at Michael's Crafts. I'm not being endorsed by Michael's, but that's one thing you can think about. And, uh, you know, play with your altar, experience it. Remember that Lord Dionysus is a very sensual God. So feel free on your altar to use beautiful crystals, beautiful cloths, gold, jewelry, fine linens, anything that speaks luxury and sensuality. That's what you'll find with this God. So anyways, I hope this helps you. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here today. I've certainly enjoyed sharing my Lord Dionysus altar with you, and I hope this has helped you. Listen, tell me in the box below, have you heard of Lord Dionysus? What do you think about him? What's your thoughts? I want to hear. Let's have a discussion. And if you want to get on my schedule for a private reading, that's a full hour, you and me, one-on-one -on -one for understanding your soul journey, give me a call, 703-825-3929. Guys, thanks for being here. We'll be back here tomorrow with more videos, so make sure to be here. But until then, may you always be under the blessings of the great Lord Dionysus. Blessed be.